Hello and welcome back to the port, I'm Gav Measure and this is Amity Reports. Amity Reports is your gameplay submissions with my commentary and today we have a submission from YT Brandon ABC and he's playing in the American Tier 7 light cruiser, the USS Cleveland. Now this is a Tier 7 and legendary game of capture the base on two brothers. On the enemy team we have a Z-23 and a division with a Lightning and a Bismarck. It's also a Wichita, Alaska, Jean Bart, Yamato, Conqueror, Conqueror. And as per pretty much every game of two brothers it's a battle of the two flanks um, there is the obviously the gap in the middle which sometimes people do um, travel uh, via to go between the two bases but most of the time most of the action happens on the two flanks enemy Yamato spotted so opening fire with the first couple of bodies of the game and he's positioned himself behind uh, this iron a very good position for the Cleveland um, especially in this game um, and quite often you'll see cruisers on this map uh, hunker down um, and this this map usually just turns into just a game of trading shots until one flank gets an advantage and can actually push up. Uh, so already setting fires on the Yamato, um, doing exactly what a Cleveland is supposed to do, um, just rain, rain hay cheese spam I guess you could say. There's also a Conqueror here, so I'm uh, sharing the love and picking out another target. Being spotted and smoke screens uh, being spotted to the front as well. Um, judging by the way that you have two destroyers spawned with you, um, I take it that the two destroyers in the enemy team, which work in the division with the Bismarck, are uh, operating over there. And the way it looks like one's dropped a smoke screen and is opening fire on you, while the other one is doing a bit of spotting. Which would probably lead me to believe that the other battleship up ahead of you is uh, going to be the Bismarck, which is in that division. There's the Z23. So I'd say it's probably the Lightning in the smoke screen then. Keep keep checking the uh, the map and the uh, the teams just to obviously confirm everything. And there's the Bismarck, yes. So. Um, as always, down in the description will be the command word and the modules submitted by the player. In this case, um, he's taken uh, Norman Scott, uh, rank 15, legendary 1. Um, traits wise, beyond range, so we're just pushing that range out a bit more. The igniter, so improving your fire chance, which is uh, going to be very helpful in this game, although you've only been able to set two fires so far. Punch through, which obviously improves uh, cruiser AP penetration. So again, well, that gives you a bit of a flexibility with your piercing shells. Taking a bit of a hit from the amateur there. She's uh, getting mostly over pens, uh, but reaching you and touching you from over behind and setting a double fire on the conqueror. Very nice, very nice. Uh, fixated, uh, that just improves your uh, gun accuracy, uh, which is uh, quite a good trend really if you're going to be playing these long range uh, games like this. And fully packed. Now you've only got legendary one, so uh, that does mean that your fully packed radius is quite small, uh, with that buff to your uh, consumable reload. Uh, but once you get like a good legendary skill level, that can become quite, um, quite large and very effective. Um, setting multiple fires on the Conqueror now, we're up to six, seven fires in total in this game. Uh, looks like the Conqueror might be running fire, 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 or a day, um, just damage con those fires, but straight away like lighting another fire. By the way, that damage control didn't last that long. Um, he might be running traits, which really reduce the reload time, but also the duration of the uh, damage control party. Uh, but also the way that he catches fire very easily. Potentially, he might be running flammable cannoneer because that that conqueror just keeps lighting up very easily. In regards to inspirations of his commander, he's taken uh, Yamamoto, uh, level 11, legendary 1, uh, so that's obviously improving uh, cruiser AP penetration, so that kind of goes hand in hand with your punch through trait. Uh, furthermore, uh, you've taken Knetsov, uh, the uh, Russian commander, which pushes out cruiser range, so again, that gives you that reaching out, touching distance in combination with your beyond range skill. Modules wise, uh, you take an aim assistant module 1, so that is obviously going to be helping with your main battery dispersion at long range. I suspect that's the main reason why you've taken it. You've also taken propulsion mod, which is probably being very effective uh, at the moment when you're playing this kind of like behind the iron play style. There goes the enemy Z23, that just leaves the lightning uh, over there somewhere. And also the uh, enemy Conqueror uh, ate up a lot of torpedoes and is now gone as well. And there's the lightning, so we're gonna be seeing if you can work her over. 
We've also taken concealment module, uh, which is an interesting one, uh, I'd have to admit, for a cruiser. But it might make a little bit of sense if you're trying to go for like a stealth uh, radar build, um, but you have to take a lot more uh, concealment buffs in order to uh, maximise that. We've also taken main battery module 3, now that's the one that improves your main battery reload at the cost of turret traverse speed, um, which again for a HE spam cruiser like this is uh, quite a reasonable choice I guess you could say. So that just leaves the lightning somewhere over there in that smoke screen, and then the Bismarck and the Yamato up front. But generally not much really exciting happening, uh, both teams are still sat on their flanks and uh, trading shots. It looks like the Bismarck is going to be going down very soon. It looks like the Lightning has left his smoke screen and has you spotted. Friendly gearing, uh, it's the only destroyer left in your team, it's the uh, friendly Kagero, uh, got shelled uh, by the Z23. Looks like the Bismarck is gone and the Alaska goes on the other flank. So the enemy team is starting to reach what I call that point of critical mass almost. It's where enough of their ships have lost enough HP that they suddenly start to drop like flies. And it uh, looks like, judging by your Yamato and your gearing, uh, the division that has uh, been playing your flank as well, so that'd be the Conqueror as well, is uh, decided it's time to start making a move. And so you're uh, acknowledging that they're, they're starting to make this push and you're pushing up with them. And considering that you've whittled the enemy team on this flight down to only uh, two ships out of the five that are spawned here, for the loss of only one of your ships, uh, it's definitely time to push that advantage. And that Yamato is again at point of critical mass, he's only got about 15,000 HP. Now the Yamato has been a bit awkward in regards to setting fires on her, most of your fires were set on the Bismarck and the Conqueror. Yamato fires a volley at you but it all splashes off, off to your port side and a double fire in that volley. Whether that will force a damage control out on the Yamato, it looks like it has. Torpedoes from the Lightning, quite obvious. You can tell it's the Lightning as well, the way, the way it's got that British kind of torpedo spread. Yamato's looks like the Yamato's going to be gone now. There you go. So that's your flank pretty much mopped up apart from a, a lightning. And looking at the other flank, they've only got one battleship, one cruiser left. So the enemy team has um, unfortunately been whittled away, I guess you could say. On this flank, they sat back and so it was just a trading of volleys and you've been able to maximise on that. On the other flank, the enemy did kind of try to do a push, um, but that kind of got... Um, I kind of faltered, and now it looks like both of your flanks are pushing up. This flank you're pretty much all the way around, and now you're flanking the remaining units on the other side, which are ironically are two bow tanking ships. They've got Witch Taylor, which can bow tank up to 15 in JP, and then there's also a Jean Bar with all the guns up front. Now, you did turn your radar on recently, and uh, so that. I didn't pick anything up, so that does mean that the uh, lightning is not within nine kilometers. Uh, however, um, it does mean that now your radar is on reload. Now, if you stay within proximity, it looks like your uh, your radar is going to reload quite quickly. Getting on your sonar, and there's the smoke screen from the lightning. Lightning's not having much luck with those torpedoes, is he? firing them all on the same line. I mean, that potentially could have got a very good hit if, if they lined up nicely, but unfortunately that wasn't the case. Now, the problem with your very low legendary trait at the moment is that your um, the radius of your fully packed uh, benefit is uh, quite small, so you'll be leaving that uh, radius very soon, and that's going to obviously increase your uh, radar reload time. Back to uh, its normal rather than uh, Reduced rate, I guess you could say. Setting fires on the Jean Bar, very nice thing, getting yourself the Wither Medal. And the enemy witch is now gone. And there goes the Jean Bar, so that literally just leaves the lightning. So, wherever the lightning's going to be. But yeah, it's been pretty much a, a, a game where enough of the friendly units have all done the right things at the right time, and you've pretty much just steamrolled up the map. 
Now, there's the lightning torpedoes again. This time she's used two narrow spreads. Yep, using the map to try and work out vaguely where she was based on the uh, direction of those torpedoes. But she's now given her, given herself up. She's uh, able to fire on the gear ring, which also then means that she's now spotted and you're uh, engaging with Alpha and Bravo turrets. Again, a few more hits. And there she goes, and that's the end of the game. So, going to the end screen, we've been able to do 113,000 damage, setting 18 fires from 258 hits on target. Pretty much sitting in uh, HE the most of that game, but then when you consider it was three battleships and two destroyers that you're engaging against, I uh, can't really blame you. Um, getting Wither Medal uh, from all those fires and how much fire damage you actually managed to achieve over the duration of that game, which is very, very nice. Going to the uh, team screen, uh, coming second on your team with a total amount of 2,066 ship XP, obviously that does include a 1.5 multiplier, um, which is um, quite reasonable. It's amusing that you're uh, you're the only one, like, getting second place without scoring any kills is actually quite amusing, especially with that amount of damage you were doing. At one point, you, uh, I think it was, you were up to about nearly 100,000 damage caused, and only one enemy ship had actually been sunk at that point in the game. So um, definitely really pushing the enemy team to the point of critical mass. Uh, looking at the ships of which were on your flank from the enemy team, um, the two destroyers did quite well coming in uh, first and second. Um, however, the Bismarck and the Conqueror, which were also on that flank, uh, come in uh, in the two bo bottom places in the enemy team. So they basically soaked up lots of damage, but didn't really get to cause too much damage. The friendly division on your team, which was the uh, the Yamato, the Conqueror, and the Girin. The uh, Girin and the Yamato are doing quite well there, uh, coming in in uh, first and third places. Going onto the economy screen and uh, following a ship service cost of 145,000 credits, you've been able to walk away with a total profit of 225,000 credits with a premium account and the Epic Credit Booster. So uh, the Epic Credit Booster probably making up about half of that profit and uh, the, the premium account obviously probably making up the other half of the profit as well. But yeah, all in all, quite a nice uh, tidy game, a nice tidy profit as well at the end of the day. If you did enjoy it, feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you enjoy this content, content feel free to subscribe. You can always send in your own game captures to the email address down below in the description. And down there will also be linked to Patreon if you want to support the channel on Patreon, the players, modules, and command build from this gameplay submission. Until next time, I'm the Gaff Major, and back to the port. Hey, hey, sail the wave, here comes the galloping major. Get out of the way there, you fellows. Unless you want me to run you down, I guess this is the life. Now, hey, hey, sail the wave, here comes the galloping